Okay, I know what you're thinking. You've seen this scene before, and you're right, except not exactly. Yeah, the group behind us are referred to as the Mueller men. They're branch managers, IT guys, and more, all from Mueller, the metal roof and building company. And they're all working extremely hard, each and every one of them constructing a new building for a Texas nonprofit. We do this once a year, and this is that time of year, the season of giving. And this is a gift that will keep on giving to folks in this community for many years to come. We're going to tell you all about it if you'll just hop in and travel with us. I'm Bob Phillips. And I'm Kelly Phillips. And this is Mueller's Helping Hand, a special edition of Texas Country Reporter. Back during what's now come to be known as the Great Recession, our friends at Mueller came to us with a request. They knew that nonprofit agencies were hurting right along with businesses and regular folks, and they wanted us to come up with an idea where they could help. So we worked together and we hatched an idea that we hoped would not just help then, but for a long, long time. Our annual tradition of Mueller's Helping Hand was born. It all started with a simple question. Who needs a building to take their charity work to the next level? The answers were fire departments, free clinics, mental health programs, and more. So far, seven nonprofits have joined the Helping Hand family. The only question left is who will be number eight? In Wichita Falls, the Floral Heights Community Food Pantry helps feed people between paydays whether that's one week or one year away. Now they're one of the biggest pantries in the region, and it's all because a church started giving away food after a natural disaster. On the edge, and we literally mean the edge of Palo Duro Canyon, sits Hidden Falls Ranch. This Christian youth camp offers amazing outdoor experiences to kids, but it's more than just a fun getaway. They learn about nature, agriculture, and life skills that they've never been exposed to. And even further up in the Panhandle, disabled and disadvantaged kids get help through the Panhandle Children's Foundation. They quietly donate money to families that are struggling, and more publicly, their retreat center in Channing runs programs for large groups with special needs. Well, it's easy to see that each of these organizations is deserving and in need, but only one can receive a special gift from Mueller. Coming up, we're going to tell you all about this year's recipient of Mueller's Helping Hand and find out why their work is so important. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mueller's Helping Hand, a special edition of Texas Country Reporter. A couple of months ago, hundreds of Texas nonprofits contacted us at TCR to tell us how a new Mueller building would help them to help others. Then our selection committee went to work, pouring over all of those applications, selecting those that seemed to be the most deserving and the most in need. The finalists were visited. Finally, one Texas nonprofit was selected from among all of those deserving agencies. The most popular thing that I give out is peanut butter and crackers. It's Thursday morning in Wichita Falls, Texas, and there's already a crowd at the activities wing of the Floral Heights United Methodist Church. They come in cars, they come on foot, and they come with children, all to receive a helping hand from people like Amy Brown. When the day is over, it's rewarding because you know when you sit down at your table at night or at breakfast, 
you know there's other people out there that are that's eating food because you cared. For more than 20 years, Miss Amy has been fighting hunger as executive director of Floral Heights Community Food Pantry. Three days a week, she and about 20 volunteers send needy people home with arms full of food. But it's more than just groceries they give away here. We do try to not just be a food pantry, we try to be a friend. Then you turn over on the back and put your name and the date, okay? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. You're lucky today. Whether it's the food, Happy the birthday. smiles, or yes, even the songs, Happy volunteers birthday. at Floral Heights freely give back to their neighbors. It all started in 1979 when the church began giving away food after a tornado. And wouldn't you know it, no one ever told them to stop. It started off with five gentlemen. They maybe only had five a day families come in. From those humble beginnings, Floral Heights Community Food Pantry has grown into the largest food pantry in the county, serving one out of every six people. It amounted to about 25 to 26,000 people that we helped last year. And every year, those numbers keep climbing. More food, more donations, more families. But as board chairman Ronna Prickett explains, they can't get the one thing they need more than any other, space. It really is hard. Um, the people that are in here sacking the, the bags have to move out of the way while the big pallets come around and they're knocking on everything and going into the other side. And the other thing is we, we move things three times as much as we should be moving things because of space. A lot of times we have to turn down the food um, for that week just because we don't have any place to put it. Even within cramped quarters, these volunteers remain dedicated to feeding as many people as they can with whatever they have. Every single person here would continue just like this if it meant helping those in need. But recently, the food pantry didn't just run out of space, they ran out of time. We found out that we weren't going to have a home. They were redecorating the church, and you know, security for children is very important. We happened to be in the security area that they want to put the children in. It was heartbreaking, and uh, they were not doing it uh, other than they were up against the wall. Just like the food pantry it founded, Floral Heights United Methodist Church is also bursting at the seams. They need every inch of their activity wing back for children's programs. And the food pantry, as important as it is, has simply become too big for just one church to support. And to Amy and Rana, it's become too big to fail. I was scared and I was, I was concerned, but for some reason I knew we weren't going to let this just go away. There was a need for this and we were going to figure out a way to do it. And the friends and the neighbors and the people in Wichita Falls would not let something that helped so many people out close. Almost as soon as the storm clouds began to gather, light started shining through. First, a large cash donation guaranteed six more months of operation. Then the church surprised everyone with an incredible going away present, the deed to an undeveloped plot of land across the street. I said my cup runneth over usually when I'm happy. But I thought maybe I'd have to get a number three cub when I heard that. <laughs> Amy and Rana were one step away from saving this community's beloved food pantry. All they needed was a building. And I guess God thought that we needed it, and the Newler building thought that we needed it uh, to carry on a work, to be a helping hand, and 
to take care of people. And so for all the clients, all the selfless volunteers, and for everyone who wants nothing more than to make this world a better place, the Helping Hand Award belongs to Floral Heights Community Food Pantry. We're gonna make y'all proud. We're gonna run the best food pantry that we can possibly run and we're going to serve as long as we need to serve. It's a good feeling to know that you can help your fellow man. The Mueller men behind us are hard at work constructing a new building that will mean so much to so many. Now when we come back, we're going to tell you how it got to this point. The story behind the building of the building. Stay with us. Well, the best safety, the best safety we've got is yourself. You've got to take care of number one first. In the early morning of a new day, before the sun has even risen, a group of guys shuffle about in the dark. All's quiet here in Wichita Falls, except for the voice of Art Brown. I want to remind you about the hard hats. When you step up on the slab, please have a hard hat on. Uh, everything can hurt you, or cut you, or crush you. Safety precautions have been discussed, and building plans have been checked and double-checked. And as a load of steel under a taut orange tarp comes rolling up, the Mueller men start their day. The truck pulled in at like 722, and they had already started putting stuff on the foundation uh, like 20 minutes later. I've never seen anything so fast in my life. Going about to and fro like a hive of bees, the Mueller men work together to construct the 4,000 square foot building in just four days. As screws go in and panels go up, they operate like a well-oiled machine. So it's easy to forget that for most of these guys, working to construct a building isn't in their job description. I am the person in the ICT department, so I help keep all the systems running for all the computers and, and help modify all the software. This is really a calling from God for me to do this. I really enjoy being able to help these organizations like this. The impact that it makes every year when we come back and we see the people from before makes you want to come back the next year and work even harder. Though a little rain provided a slight setback, the spirits of the Mueller men remain undampened. Their motivation is reflected in the faces of those this building will affect the most. People like food pantry visitor, Eddie Joe Garcia. I've been coming about four years now. Good morning, how you doing, sir? I got friends here. I got people that I can talk to when I need to talk to. Uh, I enjoy being here. There you go. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I'm sorry? I feel like uh, glad that it's here, that everybody should know that there's, if you need help, come here and get some help. If we can be a one-stop shop center, then they can come in here, they can get their groceries, they can find their baby items, they can, um, find out where um, they can put a roof over their head. And we were unable to do that in our old building, but in this building we've got plenty of room and we're just gonna keep offering until we run out of room. This building will make people happy for years and years to come. And it's not a one day thing, it will be forever.
as the final touches are completed. It's not a building that stands where a slab once lay, but a home, a place everyone from volunteers to the people who rely so heavily on the Floral Heights food pantry can finally call their own. Anybody that walks through the door, that building's theirs. And here in Wichita Falls, it's become the beginning of a new chapter for this unlikely family. This food pantry was born in Floral Heights United Methodist Church. But as we grow older, we move out of mom and dad's house and we move into a house of our own. And that's what we're doing. We're moving into a house of our own. And I can only know that it's got to be a great day when they hand those keys over to us and it's our building. And in just a few minutes, the exciting moment when this new building is passed from the Mueller men to the new owners, one very deserving and very excited nonprofit agency. The big celebration and the passing of the keys when we come back. As the parking lot surrounding the new Floral Heights food pantry begins to crowd with people, a palpable buzz fills the air. After three days of hard work and us all coming together to see that, that little moment and to see that excitement, it just makes you sit there and wonder what it's going to be like one year from now. Everyone from the high school band and cheerleaders to the local news has gathered together for a celebration. It marks the end of a hard week for the Mueller men and the beginning of a new journey for Floral Heights. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. Thank you for being here today to celebrate this wonderful, wonderful occasion with us. Probably other than my getting married and having my two children will be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. I've been saying we're blessed, we're grateful, we're excited. I've got to come up with a new word because that doesn't even touch how we really feel and how the people feel that are getting to move into this building. Now that the music has been played and volunteers have all been thanked, it's time for one final gesture. Mueller owner Brian Davenport handing over the keys. One of the things that I always look for is longevity. I want to know that the organization has total community support and has been around a while. Well, let me tell you, this organization fits that bill. With those keys, the Floral Heights Community Food Pantry will give more to struggling families than they ever could before. And to Amy Brown, Ronna Prickett, and everyone that has ever lent a helping hand at the food pantry, there's nothing like this moment. It's my pleasure to present you with the keys to the building. There's so many good people in the world, and I think I've met a majority of them <laughs> this week. They've all been here. They probably don't like me to tell them this, but they're all angels. They're all angels. They're the best guys I've ever run into. We never dreamed this. I mean, we dreamed big, but we didn't dream this big. We never dreamed this big. Thank you, God.
And now after a long road and a whole lot of hard work, the folks at the Floral Heights Community Food Pantry have a new home and a lot of new hope. And pretty soon these folks will be helping lots of individuals and families in need. It's all thanks to the hard work and the good hearts of lots of people who care. We want to thank you for traveling with us this week. Next week.